You know, it's with anything you do, you must know what you're doing before you can actually do it. Logically, does that not? You got to know what you're doing before you do it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people, though, that will, if I got to put something together or something like that, I'm bad about, oh, I think I figured this out and not read the instructions. I'll read the instructions <laughs> later. Now, I have been, I have done that. Uh, I have to. <laughs> at least have others. But, but, you know, in general, that, again, that applies to most anything you do in life. You must know before you do. Or it's wise to know before you do. It minimizes the possibility of mistakes. And that definitely applies to God's, God's will. You must know His will to do His will. Now, as I've thought through and gone through this this series, and and I'm you know it, it's really there's a lot of different tangents to go off. There may be another sermon down the road on this called "I'm Not a Robot," so that might be down the road because I I, I want to revisit this, but I'm going to have to wait a little while. Uh, but anyway, you know you must know know His will. To do his will. And again, that might not be every single case. But in knowing and doing, you cannot separate these two. I tried to separate them in two sermons, and I keep they keep coming back together, and I think it's just the nature of it. Knowing God's will, we need to do that. I mean, we need to we need to know his will. That don't stop that. Just knowing it, not doing it. That don't make sense. That's what God wants for us. To know His will and to do His will. To know His will and to do His will. If you just know and don't do it, that's not in God's will. You know, this really works out logically if you think it through. You know, again, last week, knowing God's will. Today, doing God's will. We all should be asking ourselves, am I doing God's will. If not, how can I do God's will? Psalm 143.10 Teach me to do your will. Teach me to do your will. Because you are my God. Let your spirit lead me on level ground. Teach me to do your will because you are my God. I'm part of your family. Let your spirit lead me. Let your spirit teach me to know and to do your will. We should know these, but that they bear repeating. <clears throat> to worship and to praise God. We talked about these last week. To pray. To serve God. To know God better. To come to Christ. To serve and love each other. Forgive each other. To attend church. This one is new from last week. Work in unity. To help your church flourish. To share your faith with others. Now, you can probably think up a list that long or even long. Just look through the Bible and you'll find things very similar. But what is God's will for me? You know, I'm going to go to us individually. Then I'm going to come back to us sort of as a group or a church. Uh, and I don't want this to sound selfish, but this is part of it. You know, it's one of those times, well, what's God, God, what's your will for me? That's, there's nothing wrong by it. You should be. Well, you know, well, golly Lord, I just want to know what your will is. I hope you're praying that. I hope you're asking that question. I hope you're asking the question what God's will is for you. If you're not, you, you, 
you might not know it. And then it gets back to that knowing and doing thing. You know, I think you have to begin somewhere in this. And, it, and this is a fairly famous scripture in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. If these verses aren't underlined in the Bible, do it. Need to. Maybe it may be one of those that comes to you already underlined, <laughs> or you know they need to be. I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect. This, especially chapter 2, where both, both of these are used quite frequently in sermons. I've used it many, many times. It's one of those that, you know, how, what should I do? How should I live my life? You can say Romans 12, 1 and 2. Present yourself to God as holy as you can be. Now you can look at that many different ways, and some people get real, real, real legalistic about it, and you know, and it, you know, oh, I'm not holy enough, or I'm not worthy enough, or I can't attain that. But just try, confess your sins, like we talked about. That's God wants to hear that. That's presenting yourself, repentance, presenting yourself as holy as you can be. Lord, I'm trying to be more holy. That's God's will for you. There ain't no doubt about that. Do not conform to this world. Do not conform to this world. Now, you can get all into the details of what that means. Again, that's another sermon for another time. But transform your mind to God. Don't think worldly, think godly. Don't think worldly, don't think worldly, don't think godly. That's what this saint tells me. That's God's will for you. No doubt. That's God's will for each and every one of us. There's no doubt in my mind. But we've got to come back to God's will for us individually. That is... But there's more. Again, I, I, I wrote myself a note after I went back through this. You know, we're not robots. And if you dig in, I'm going to have to come back to another message on this on, on free will and all that and how much free will we have, how much God... You know, I will say this. We're not, from a Methodist theological point of view, we're free will people. God gives us free will to make a mistake or do the right thing. We're not robots. God's programmed. We go around, oh, I'm doing God's will. We're not. That's not the way it works as far as I understand it from a, from a biblical theological perspective. And that's what Methodists in general believe. You know, God's will for us individually might be, okay, let's, let's Emily, I want to pick up a little bit. Not much. What, what you, get? you know, most everybody goes to school. It, I think it's God's will for kids go to school. Everybody goes to school, get education. That's within God. But you had a choice to make after you got out of high school. Am I going to do this? I'm going to do that. And knowing you well enough, you saw God's will. Is this what you want me to do? And I think you're in God's will. And I don't know. That's between you and God. I'll talk about that later. Same with Tina. Tina made a decision three years ago, four years ago. Late 30s, I'm going to go back to school. 
get my degree. Work and work and work. Taking care of dying grandma. That was God's will for sure, to take care of me. And work and work and work. And went through it. And well, I think I need to kick that up a notch or two. I think that's God's will. Because why is it? Because Tina says, I may be the only Jesus them kids see. And I know Tina doesn't think she's Jesus, but she has the compassion of Jesus. When she walks into the room, and I'm picking on her now, but it's similar. I, you know, I remember that time at the ice cream place. Remember that you told the story of the lady who worked out there? You remember that? She said, I don't know why I'm telling you something like, I don't know why I'm telling you this. And she just poured out her heart to you while you was coming up there to get ice cream. Is that sort of the. I was working there. Oh, that's right. It's the other way. Yeah. She was a customer and you were working there. Yeah. But see, that's God's will for you. At that moment, God wanted you to do that. God wanted you to go to school. I know no, you saw, you searched your mind and prayed, so you you were within that, and, you know. And I, and that Dwayne's wheel has to be a little bit in the, in the, in the mix in that. So, and I'll talk. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but uh, but that's what I talk. School, jobs, you know, going to military. Now, you know, I don't know if it's God's will for me to go in the military, but it did. Ken, do you know if it's God's will for you to go in the military? I mean, yes. That, it's hard to tell, but we did it. And, and, it, and as far as me, it wasn't a mistake. If I had it to do over, I would have done it again. And I, Ken, would you say the same thing? So, and those others that serve, you, you make that choice. You, you make that choice. Career change. You know, when to retire. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Now, all these kind of things are really between you and God and your family. You know, that, that's really, when you get into those situations like that, I can't tell you what God's will is for you. You could ask me, do you think this is God's will for me? I'd ask you a whole bunch of questions. I'd say, well, yeah, so it sounds like it. If you come up to me and say, is it God's will for me to, to uh, worship and praise Him? Well, heck yeah, it is. Heck yeah, it's, your, it's God's will. There's no doubt in my mind. To help this church flourish, heck yeah. That's God's will. You know, I firmly <laughs> believe that, he, that you, if you ask Him, He will reveal. Reveal his will for you. If you ask him, he will confirm it. Now, it may not be right away. It may not be right away. I'll tell you that right, right now. It may not be right away. I will say that over and over again. Lord, show me your will. Tell me to do your will. Well, I told you last week, but I had no idea it was the will of God for me to be a pastor. I did not know that until nearly eight years ago. You know, I've seen it in my whole life. That's one instance. Sometimes I have been out of God's will unknowingly. And probably intentionally. If I ask myself, that there's probably been times I've intentionally been out of God's will. You know, if 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 we're in a sinful situation, that's out of God's will. Y'all know that. And, you know. Come on. That's not God's will. Uh, you know, if if you feel God pushing you in a certain direction, you all know this, y'all know that feeling, or you should know, pushing me in a, in a certain direction. Oh, Lord, I just don't want to do that. Like Jesus in the garden. Jesus didn't want to do it. Jesus didn't want to go on the cross and die for our sins. But what did he do? You know, not my will, 
but your will. And I think there's times we've been out of God's will and we just don't know it. And then we realize later on, I've many times, not many times, but I've realized, oh, I really messed up. But God protected me. God protected me and watched over me and forgave me. You know, I don't think it's a sin to be out of God's will as long as you're not sinning. Does that make sense? You know, if, you, if you're if you going a different direction than what God wants you to go and you're not, I don't necessarily think that's a sin. And I have to think on that just a little bit. So I hesitantly say that. You know, when I retired, took early retirement, I knew I was going to have to have some other source of income. I love boating and boats and all y'all know that. I worked hard, spent money, time, and became a licensed boat captain. I sent out Ray, gave resumes out, put them around. But I finally come to the conclusion that that wasn't God's will for me at that time. And my financial advisor said, well, you really don't have to do anything else. I mean, it was loaded, but it just, you're okay. Right now, what the church gives me, because I got my second Social Security. I got my second, I got my second Social Security direct deposit. <laughs> so, <laughs> that helps. that wasn't apparently what God's will for me at this time. More time as pastor, I think that's God's will. I've been able to do, have, get more time as your, being your pastor. Evangelist and author. Maybe. we got two big question marks. Who knows down the road? door may open. He will show me. He will show me. He will show you. I'm convinced that He will show you. He might show you the moment right before it's going to happen, but He will show you. You know, going and doing God's will for yourself. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but when I originally wrote this down, I said, it's really pretty easy. And I thought, I said, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? So I got up this morning, and I, I went up things in the middle of the night. That ain't easy. That's why I said, I've gone through all this. It's not easy. <laughs> I said, well, that was dumb. So I changed it. can be tricky. <laughs> I don't want to say it's difficult. But, again, it can be tricky. If you ask, continue to ask, Continue to ask. Continue, I say that more. Continue to ask God, show me your will. Let me know your will. And give me the strength to do your will. And I did write this down. Pester. Is it okay to pester God? You know, I thought about that. I, I think it is. Now that may be an old southern slang term. might have to pester God. He might keep telling you no. He may keep telling you no. Or say, I'll show you eventually. You know, what's tougher for us, though, in be, is being unified and doing God's will for the kingdom of God. Uh, Connie gets the title <laughs> in Scripture uh, but really nobody sees the final thing, but sometimes I don't have it ready until yesterday afternoon. But uh, she's right on target with the direction I was, I was headed in uh, uh, Mark uh, chapter 3, verses 31 and 35. And his mother, speaking of Jesus, and his mother and his brothers arrived standing outside and they sent word to him and called to him. And a multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Behold, your mother and your 
brothers are outside looking for you. And answer them, he said, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about on those who were sitting around him, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister. And my book. I kept thinking, how does this fit into this message? God gave me this. How does this fit in to this message? Let's think about it. Jesus' is family, his flesh and blood, half brother, and his mother were looking for him. What did they do? They found him doing ministry. They found him doing the will of God. That's what he was doing. They called to him. They were like them baby getting out on the front porch out there. <coughs> Jesus, Jesus, where are you, Jesus? It's your mother. Your brothers and I want to talk to you. And I don't know if that's what they did, but it sounds like, if you look at this, it sounds like what they might have done. If he heard them, we don't get an indication that he did it. Then somebody says, hey, Jesus, your mom's looking for you. Your mom's calling for you. Your, your mother and your brothers are out there outside. They want to talk to you. You know, looking around, he says, you know, you're my family also. goes on, he said, whoever does the will of God is my family. And I, as I finish this up, I said, what a fitting end to this series. Whoever does the will of God is my family. Individually, we can 
probably do better knowing and doing God's will as a little church we can do better in knowing and doing God's will that's the challenge of the church big or small Paul, do you think St. Paul has no one to do in God's will perfected? <laughs> you know, I'm not picking on St. Paul. <laughs> or Gainesville first. Or the vine over here. Or in the White Plains Baptist. Or the other Baptist going down here. Well, I can't remember their name. But no, that's, that's, the, that's the struggle we have as Christians. To know God's will and to do God's will and, and as a church to be unified in carrying that out. Praise be to God that we are the family of God and we really want to do God's will. I know that is, that is the case. That we want to, know, we want to do God's will. Amen.